Hi class, welcome to our last video lesson on chapter 8. It's 8-6, we're talking about trapezoids today. Here's the definition of a, trapezoids, of a trapezoid. It is a quadrilateral, so it has four sides, but instead of having two parallel, uh, two sets of parallel sides, it has exactly one set of parallel sides. So a trapezoid looks like this. So with the four sides, the parallel sides are called bases. So here, the, this is parallel to this side, so those are called the base sides. And then the legs are the other two sides that are not parallel. So here's a leg right over here, and here's a leg right over there. And then the base angles, there's two sets of base angles. One pair that goes with one side that's parallel, and then the other pair of base angles goes with the other parallel side. So those are the parts of a, of a trapezoid. To get more specific, there's a special type of trapezoid called an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles triangle is where two legs of the triangle are congruent. Same is true of an isosceles trapezoid, is that the two legs are the exact same length. So if this is seven feet, then this is seven feet as well. The legs are congruent in an isosceles trapezoid. So here, an if-then statement, if a trapezoid is isosceles, then the diagonals are congruent. So here's an isosceles trapezoid. That means that the distance from point A to point C, that segment, is congruent to the other diagonal, point D to point B. So that's a similar property to the rectangle. In the rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. Same is true of the isosceles trapezoid. Another conditional statement, if a trapezoid is isosceles, then the base angles are also congruent. So that means that with this parallel line, the base angles are congruent. And then here is the other parallel line. So the other set of base angles are also congruent. Also interesting to note about an isosceles trapezoid is if this is the transversal that cuts this parallel line right here, these two parallel lines, well, that means that we have consecutive interior angles, and consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So if this angle is like 120 degrees, for example, this one has to be 60. And then because it's an isosceles trapezoid, we would also know that the base angles are congruent. So this one also has to be 120, and this one has to be 60. Again, we know that they are supplementary. 120 plus one, or sorry, yeah, 120 plus 60 equals 180. We know that because consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So keep that in mind as we do some problems here in isosceles trapezoids. Okay, and the last term that we're going to refer to with trapezoids, with trapezoids, is called the median of a trapezoid. The median is a segment with endpoints that are the midpoints of the legs. So if we take this leg right here, the midpoint, the point in the middle of that green segment, is this spot right there. Same is true on this side. This segment right here, if you were to find the midpoint of that segment, it would be this one right here. So now we connect the two midpoints, if those are the two endpoints, that red line that I just drew right there, that's called our median. Couple facts about the median of a trapezoid. The median is always parallel to the bases. So as you can see, there's another red arrow right here. All three of these lines are parallel. They'll have the same slope. Another fact is about the length. The length is always the average of the two bases. And you find the average by adding up the two bases and dividing it by two. So the median equals base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. We're going to use this formula several times in our video lesson for today. All right, so here we have example number 1. It says in trapezoid A, B, C, D, A, B is 13. So I'm just going to put a 13. Maybe it's 13 inches, 13 meters, 13 miles. We don't know. We just know that it's 13. And C, D is 7. C, D right here is 7. Find xy, the median of the trapezoid. So if xy is the median, the median, that means that x is the midpoint of CB, y is the midpoint of DA, and to find this, I'll put an x right here, 
it's the average of the two bases. So the median equals base 1, 7, plus base 2, 13, divided by 2. So that distance, the length of segment XY, which is the median, is 20 divided by 2 is 10 units. Okay, that's the answer to our example number one. In our example number two, this time it's not asking us to find the median. It's telling us that AB is the median. The median is 57. So we want to find the length of segment JM. We want to find this distance right here. Again, I'll call that X. Well, the median is found by taking base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. It's the average of the two bases. So the median, we know it, it is 57. So 57, that equals base 1. We also know that one. It's 21 plus the other base. We're trying to find that. I'll call that x divided by 2. So algebraically now, let's solve for that second base. Let's solve for x. Multiply both sides by 2, and we get 114. That equals 21 plus our other base, which we'll call x. Subtract 21 from both sides, and we would get 93. x equals 93, or to be more specific, our segment JM, segment JM equals 93. Another way that you could have done this if you wanted to is you could say, how many units is it to get from 57 to 21? If you take 57 minus 21, that would be 46 units. So if I have to go 46 units this way, I have to go 46 units more than 57. 57 plus 46. Uh-oh, now I got 103. What did I do? What did I do? Oopsies. <laughs> this should have been a 3, right? 7 minus 1 is 6. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I'd have to go 36 units. There we go. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 93. So anyway, you could have done it either of those two ways. All right, last one today. We want to determine whether a quadrilateral is a trapezoid. And if it is a trapezoid, we want to see if it's an isosceles trapezoid. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And if I want to show that it's a trapezoid, one thing that's very distinct about the trapezoid is that there is one set of parallel lines. So we want to prove that the, the bases are parallel. So we're going to prove bases are parallel. And by that, we're going to use the slope formula. If it is a trapezoid, we want to get even more specific and see if it's isosceles. For an isosceles trapezoid, we want to prove the legs are congruent. If the legs are congruent, then we also know that it is an isosceles trapezoid. So let's graph our figure here, our quadrilateral. Left 3, up 3 is point A. Point B is left 4, down 1. Point C is right 5, down 1. And point D is right 2, up 3. So here is our quadrilateral. Now, as we've said many times in this chapter, just graphing it is not enough information to prove whether it's isosceles or, or just a regular trapezoid. We have to prove it using, in this case, the slope formula to see if the bases are parallel. If the bases are parallel, if they have the same slope, then we know it's a trapezoid. So let's find base AD. What is the slope of AD? We want to find the slope of this line right here. Well, you could probably guess what it is, but let's use the slope formula. It is going to be y2 minus y1, 3 minus 3, 
over x2 minus x1. 2 subtract a negative 3. And we get 0 over 5, and 0 divided by 5 is just 0. And that makes sense, right, everybody? A horizontal line should have a slope of 0. Now let's find the slope of our other base, BC. Also a horizontal line, so it should also have a slope of 0. But let's make sure a negative 1 subtract a negative 1 over 5 subtract a negative 4. A negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 5 plus 4 is 9. 0 divided by 9 is again 0. So because these two slopes are the same, we know that AD is parallel to BC, and that means that we have a trapezoid. That quadrilateral ABCD is a trapezoid. But now we want to go one step further. We now want to see, is this sucker an isosceles trapezoid? If it's an isosceles trapezoid, then distance AB is going to be congruent to distance DC. So let's use the distance formula to find the distance from A to B. That's what we're going to do right now. So here is the distance from A to B. It is the square root of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1. So we have a negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Squared is a positive 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is a negative 4. And a negative 4 squared is 16. So the square root of 17 units is the distance from A to B. Square root of 17. Now let's find the distance from D to C. The distance from D to C equals the square root. So we have x2 minus x1, 2 minus 5 quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1, 3 subtract a negative 1, that quantity squared. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3, a negative 3 squared is a positive 9. 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 squared is 16, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So we have 5 units, or the square root of 25, and the square root of 17. Are these two lengths the same distance? Of course not. So that means it is a trapezoid, but it's not isosceles. It is a trapezoid, or only a trapezoid, not isosceles. That concludes our lesson for trapezoids. Let me know if you have any questions about that when you get to class tomorrow.